What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast. We are your host. I'm Arnold Telegaarda. And I'm missing no days off. Fred Rosser, episode 62, is very special to me. Arnold, I say all the time that any guest that we have on is very near and dear to me. Uh, I was talking to you about your best friend, Mike. Um, you know, in a new school, a new setting, you don't have any friends. And then you have this connection with this one particular person. Uh, our guest was kind of like my new friend in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I didn't really know anyone, but our next guest is uh, the Boricua Grim Reaper. Uh, he's making moves, making moves, and making moves glo globally, trying, you know what I mean? He's trying to make moves like Mr. No Days Off. Uh, Mr. Danny Limelight, thank you for joining us on Pro Bro Wrestling. I always say, don't die with the story and you tell it, brother. Hey, what's up, Fred? What's up, Arnold? How you guys doing, man? Uh, thank you for the introduction. You made me sound way cooler than I actually am, Fred. Um, yes. It was it was amazing, you know, just to see how you were in the locker room. You know, somebody that I used to watch on TV, somebody who did it all, you know, been there, done that. And then seeing how humble you were, your energy just gravitated me towards you and we just hit it off. And I'm happy to be here, happy to, you know, make your acquaintances and start building this friendship. And Arnold, you know, anybody that... Fred keeps in his circle has to be good people, so it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for being on the podcast, bro. And how's 2020 treating you, man? How's it going man, so far? 2020 has been amazing. Um, honestly, I think that both professionally and personally, this year has did things for me that I wasn't expected. Um, I thought I was having a really solid 2019. You know, I called it the year of the spider. I was making towns, making new states, and. <laughs> And, and traveling all over. I had just, you know, it was my last year in the military too. So um, I thought 2019 was my year and then some things happened to me towards the end. I ended up separating my shoulder and kind of set me back. And I came into 2020 with this 2020 vision and I was like, there's nothing that's going to stop me. And the quarantine happened. And even though, you know, I feel bad for a lot of people because it kind of set a lot of people back. Yeah. Um, it, it actually motivated me and pushed me to work harder. And wow. It, things really... The, the, the quarantine was a blessing in disguise for me. Things really took off for me um, in my wrestling career, in my acting and stunt career for my daughter. You know, she, she, she booked, you know, a national commercial and, 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 and it's just been nonstop work and, and, you know, best shape of my life. And I'm, I'm just, I feel happy. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to do something that you love. It's another thing to do something just to get paid. And it's, something, it's another thing to do something you love while being happy. And I, I feel like, Right now, I'm at that place, and it just feels so good, and I feel, I'm fired up, and I can't wait. For, <laughs> you know, the year's almost over, but it, it, I just want to finish this year strong, and, and I'm excited. Man, good for you, bro. I don't bump into a lot of people with um, your energy right now for 2020, exactly. you know, so that's really rare. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Limelight oozes machismo, man. Like, I'm a quiet guy. Limelight just... I remember when I was in the locker room, he, he, um, he came up to me. He's like, yo, what's your Instagram? I gave him my Instagram and he just walked away. And, he, and uh, 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 the one thing, like, I don't want to uh, sound too crazy. The one thing that uh, attracts me to uh, Limelight is his connection with his daughter. You know, I, you know this podcast, we, we go all over the place, Arnold. But just like the connection with his daughter, me growing up, I had all cousins. I was the only kid growing up. But now that I'm able to experience uh, ha having a goddaughter that's seven years old, the stuff that comes out of her mouth, you know, girls mature quicker than guys. But Limelight, you know, just the way he, um, on top of the wrestling, the way he just shows his affection to, to, to his daughter. Um, you pronounce her name Lacey? Uh, her name is Khaleesi, but we call, her, we call her Lacey for short. Lisey, you know, the way, you know, you vibe with your daughter, man, that's very attractive, man, very attractive. And also, you know, I just, I, I just always, uh, always gain a cool relationship with, uh, with just Puerto Ricans, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the uh, pre Primo and Epico on the road with WWE, I could work them every night in the road, every night on the road and not get hurt. Uh, my last ex was uh, Filipino and Puerto Rican. And uh, in the DM limelight, you said you guys are crazy as I got to keep it PG. Yeah, but you guys are just as crazy as they come, man. But I just love the connection between you and your daughter. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah, she 
you know, I, I remember when her mom told me that she was pregnant and I was like, you know, I want a boy, I want a boy, I want a boy. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted that Rivera legacy, you know, t- to grow. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to sound dumb right now, but even when we went to the, the, the ultrasound just to find out the gender of the baby or, you know, to, you know, uh, and, and they told me that it was going to be a girl. Um, I, I looked at the lady and I was like, is there still time for <laughs> like, oh something to grow? Goodness. Can we reverse uh, it? <laughs> I, I, I was like, is there still time? For, you know, I, I didn't know anything. I was, shit, I think I was 21 years old, going on 22. I was young, wild, and reckless. Um, but, but I was there in the hospital. Um, my daughter's named after Game of Thrones. Uh, she's named after Khaleesi. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was there in the hospital Easter Sunday, 2014, on the debut season of season four of Game of Thrones. I had my laptop connected with the with the the show streaming, and I was holding my daughter's mom's leg while she pushed the baby out. You know, I cut the umbilical cord. The baby was screaming. They put her on the thing to wash her, give her her first bath. We brought it to her mom, and like you know, we we we, we hugged her, we loved her, and then I looked and I said, "Okay, Game of Thrones is on." <laughs> and I, I sat down and. I just remember, like, her mom sitting next to me because her mom loved the show, too. Her mom sitting in, like, the little, um, you know, the, 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 the medical bed. She's holding the baby. The baby's sound asleep. And I'm sitting next to them. And we was in the hospital for about two, two, three days and two nights. And I, I slept on this little chair. I didn't leave the hospital. I wanted to go get her food from, like, the cafeteria. And I slept on this little chair. I was so uncomfortable. My neck hurt. <laughs> but it, it immediately, like, as soon as... Like I grabbed her for the first time, like, and I was like, "This is my daughter. Like, I will forever be the example of what she looks for in a man or in a woman, whatever she's into. Like, I am the the the, bear, the, the bearer of the standard, you know. And, and I I took that with 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 pride and honor. And you know, me and her mom, we 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 I don't feel like we were meant to be together, um, but but we we were like grown enough to be like, hey, let's be friends and let's raise, mm-hmm. you know, let's be a tag team and raise this little girl and. Yeah. My daughter, man, she is something else. And I see uh, Fred and his relationship with his goddaughter, and they're about the same age. My daughter's six now, and, and she's just a ball of like light. And she's, the, you said, Fred, you said the things that your goddaughter says is crazy. My daughter says like the most outlandish things. And, you know, like when she wants to clown on me, she'll be like, hey, dad, you know, you're a good looking guy. How come you're still single? Like, and she'll, like <laughs> she'll clown me with the single thing all the time, or she'll clown me. With, with, you know, my mom doesn't want to be with you no more. Like, and she says it, like, in a playful way to try to, like, yes. razzle me. Yeah. But but she's full of energy. She knows what she wants. She she loves watching wrestling. She she loves doing the acting. She she, she she does amazing at auditions and callbacks and things like that. And she's good at school, too. So, like, her mom is still in the military. That's where we met was the military. So she gets the whole, you know, normal life of go to school, get a job, get a career from her mom. And then with me, she gets to, like, spread her wings and follow her dreams and it's a perfect balance and i think that it's awesome uh limelight uh she's involved in acting uh is it something that you uh is it something that she wanted to do or like um what agency did you uh look into providing for her so so um so crazy story was that i i literally um had my first audition ever myself was with Marvel uh, in 2018. It was wow. a audition with Marvel. That's big. And I auditioned for the role of Spider Man for the stunt show. And yeah, fucking amazing, amazing audition. There was a hundred and something people there. And it, it was it came down and they were auditioning for a whole bunch of different parts for this the show. And I came down to the last the top ten, me and some other people, and in this audition, I met my ex fiance, which is the girl that I was with after. And, and um, I'm not going to talk about her too much, but she kind of introduced me into the world of stunts. And I started doing the stunt stuff, started, you know, doing little things here and there. Then I said, you know what? I'm already portraying this large in the life character on television or wrestling. You know, I know how to talk with a microphone. What if I try doing acting as well? It was something I always wanted to do when I was a kid. But, you know, in New York City, a Puerto Rican kid telling his teachers that he wants to be an actor or a wrestler when he grows up, they look at you like you're crazy. Um, so I, I left in the military, started pushing my dreams, you know, and my daughter was always this very charismatic little girl that lit up a room. Um, she was always photogenic. She, she, she loved being in front of the camera and we, I started watching what she would do and she would like sit down, play with her toys and just pretend that she was filming like a YouTube video. Like she, she she would be like, Hey kids, welcome to my channel. Da, 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 da. But she doesn't have a YouTube account or nothing. And I'd be like, who are you talking to? And she was like, oh, I'm just practicing. I'm just practicing. 
and she would play and, and act and she'll she'll dress up and, and and I was like you know I was big into the whole cosplay thing you know I, I dressed up as Spider Man for like children's hospital visits and she loved dressing up she mm-hmm. loved doing all these things we go to Disneyland she dressed up like a princess and she loved being in character she mm-hmm. memorized lines from movies she memorized songs and I was just like you know I talked to her mom and I was like what if you know I'm doing it now I'm getting an understanding for the business like she's she's she just turned five like let's do something with this. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, her and I got the same commercial agency, which was Aqua Talent Agency. They're phenomenal. Our agent is Blake. He's great. Um, he got he got me and her on his on his agency, and then for theatrical, I'm represented by Chasen Agency, and she's represented by Seven Stars Talent. Which I met the the agent for Seven Stars on set of a music video that I was doing for this kids Bob kid named Isaiah Morgan, and. I hit it off really well with the, with the family and stuff like that, you know, just being a good person. And they, you know, I told them that my daughter loved kids, Bob. My daughter, they invited my daughter to have a personal meet with the kid Isaiah Morgan. His mom ended up being the agent for Seven Stars Talent. And when Khaleesi walked in, she just lit up the room and her mom, you know, her mom had asked me, like, does she do this too? I sent her her little reel and stuff like that. And she signed her within two days to the agency. Um, my daughter had her first audition in January of 2020 was for a Trolls commercial for Serial. Her first audition, she booked it, her first one, first shot, national commercial show. She was, uh, it was like a uh, General Mills Serial and she's in a shopping cart with a bunch of little kids and they're like talking about the movie Trolls and she has this one cool line and after that she was hooked. You know, then I started writing my own projects and starting giving her little roles here and there so she could start getting used to being in front of the camera and auditioning and she's been doing amazing with these callbacks and 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 it's it runs in the genes, you know. It must be it must be it must be the, the radioactive genes. I don't know. <laughs> She's awesome. Her mom at first was like not sure about it, but now her mom supports it. Uh, her mom gives me you know a hand when I need to. Her her grandmother from her mom's side, or we call her her nana. She uh she's really good at like if I can't get to Khaleesi in time, she'll like work the lines with her. So it's a team a team mm. um, a thing with, between everybody, um, regardless of our relationship status. And we just work together, and, and Khaleesi loves it. And there's times where she's like, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, do this audition. And I'll like, okay, and I tell the agent, hey, she's not feeling this one. You know, she's good for you, man. Don't let her do it, but, but, but majority of the time, she, she there's only been two auditions that she did not want to do. Other than that, she's all game for it. Yeah, that's really awesome. And I think it's so beautiful. Well, to me, it sounds that she's kind of like the mini version of you, your mini me, you know, that's where she probably gets it from. And I think it's so special that you share not only one bond, but like two bonds with your daughter. I mean, loving wrestling and acting. And, you know, basically, um, that's almost like your your world right there, man. And that's something that you guys have in common. You know what's crazy is I never would have found professional wrestling if it wasn't for my daughter. Wow. I'm going to tell you the story. It's going to blow your fucking mind. Okay. Sorry, I don't know if I can curse. You can do whatever you want, man. I was I was in Target. She was she was four months old, and she was sitting in the little uh, cart thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Kids, yeah. yeah, we all did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, was, I, I put the, the cart by the Blu-ray section because I was looking for a new Denzel Blu-ray because I, lo- I have all of Denzel's movies. Like, I love Denzel. And my daughter, she, she was very, she was crawling and trying to walk very, very young. And she was very, like, her, her um, what's the word? Hand, her hand and eye, like, not the hand-eye coordination, but her, her like, whatever. Was she antsy? Is that what it is? No, she was very, like, on, on like, very ahead, very ahead of, of her learning. Her got daughter. it. Got it, her got it. Her age. Yeah, yeah. And she ended up smacking some, the, some DVDs down. And I, it was like off like the sales rack or whatever. And I started picking them up. And one of the DVDs was The Rock's Top 10 Greatest Matches. And so The Rock was my favorite growing up. I, I picked it up. It was $10. So I, I said, like, I'm going to buy it. I went home. I sat my daughter on a little bopper. And I gave her a bottle. I put The Rock's DVD on. We started watching The Rock versus Mankind or something like that. I can't remember which one it was. And her mom came in from the kitchen and she's like, what are you watching? Why is my daughter watching this? And I was like, oh, it's wrestling. And she had told me she had never really watched it before. So at the time we were still married. I was like, you know, I think it'd be a cool date night to, to go watch, you know, wrestling. I looked online and WWE was coming to the Valley View Casino the next week. It was August of 2014. They were coming to the Valley View Casino. Um, and so I bought tickets for me and, and my ex-wife. We get there, and I run into a friend who told me he was training to be a pro wrestler. I laughed at him, 
because I thought it was like funny because I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I'm watching. I think the main event was like it was a house show. So like the main event was like it was right before right before Rollins turned on the Shields. It was like Rollins and Reigns in a tables match against like the Authority or something like that. And um, he's talking to me, telling me he's like, yeah, there's a there's a there's a warehouse with a ring, and we're training to be a wrestler, and da 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 da. You should come check it out. And I and I looked at my ex wife, and she looked at me like, go like if you want to go check it out, go check it out, like whatever. So I ended up going to this school, and it ended up being a wrestling ring there. And the promoter was like a complete douchebag. And he, he didn't think I was going to do it. Like, he looked at me. I was a lot smaller back then. I, I had lost a lot of weight from being a drone instructor in the military. Um, actually, I wasn't a drone instructor yet, but I had lost a lot of weight from, from the military. And, and um, I was like, are you going to take my money or not? It was like $130 a month to train. I'm like, you, let me know. If not, I'll try to figure something out. And I didn't know what was going to come from it. And he took my money. I started training. Three months into training, I made my debut. And then... After that, things kind of really started to slowly take off for me, and the, the the promoter ended up, you know, not wanting to work with me anymore because I started taking bookings outside of his company, and he was one of those guys that kind of wants, oh, you know, I want my guys to be exclusive, but he's paying me twenty dollars, you know, and that doesn't even cover the gas in my fucking Camaro, but whatever, and, and like, so he cuts me off, he blacklists me, tells nobody to book me, doesn't want doesn't want me to wrestle anymore. So here I am, you know, it was like nine months into wrestling. I'm like, I guess I'm not going to wrestle anymore. And I get a call from my man, David Marquez, um, I, who's somebody that I give all the credit to for my career because he knew everything that was going on. I explained my side of the story. And he said, you know what? I have a spot for you, a championship wrestler from Hollywood. And I was like, isn't that TV? I was like, I've only been doing this for like 10 months. And he's like, I think you'll be fine. I have a plan. Well, the plan was to pair me with, with, with Seville, a.k.a. Gino Rivera, and we became, <laughs> we became Los Primos Rivera. And after I started wrestling on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood with Seville or Gino, um, I started getting a lot more independent bookings. And, hey, and, you guys and, look good as a tag team, too. I saw a picture of you both with the matching tights and everything. You guys yeah, look like a legit yeah. tag team. Yeah, the chemistry. We had wrestled each other one-on-one -on -one before that happened. And it was a good heart. It was a good. I had fun in that match, and he he hit me with some baby powder in the face, <laughs> pulled me up and stuff like that. And uh, um, the chemistry was just natural. Like it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel. It just happened, and it, it felt so good, you know. And we did really really good. And you know, then things happened. We separated. Um, I started getting a lot of independent singles bookings, mostly in the San Diego area. And I had a match in San Diego where Victoria was at and Conan, and. It was a two out of three falls match. It was one of my favorite matches ever. Um, the main event had like Rey Mysterio, Phoenix, Penta, like like all like all these guys. And uh, Conan comes up to me and he's like, you know, I want I want you to come to Mexico to the crash. So I said, okay. He said, both of you, I want you to have this match, a one on one. You're gonna open up the crash. I go to Mexico to wrestle in front of 5,000 people in the, the Fosco Gutierrez Auditorium. That was my WrestleMania moment right there. The main event was Santo and Hijo de Santo. They hadn't wrestled. Hijo de Santo had never wrestled in, in, in Tijuana before, and Santo hadn't been there in years. And it, they had Phoenix, Pentagon. Lince Dorado hadn't been signed yet. He had just came off the Cruiserweight Classic. He was on the card. Willie Mack was on the card. Um, you know, Mr. 450. All these, like, dope, dope guys, man. Um, and, and Garza was on the card. Humberto was on the card, but this was when Humberto was wearing a mask still. And he was wrestling in Tijuana, you know. So all these guys are like my boys, you know. And like I'm this new, like like now we're friends. But before I was like this new guy, and me and my boy DJ, we opened the show um, in Mexico. And it was after that match that, and after that card, with Conan had gave us like the thumbs up of approval. Like things really took off for me, and 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 you know, I'm just. I, I was rocking and rolling since, and, and then I, I had to leave wrestling for a little bit in 2016 because I had to go be a drone instructor in San Diego. I had no time. I was making Marines. Um, and then when I came back, it was 2018, I started wrestling again and started trying to find bookings and a place to train because I had nowhere to train and just trying to, you know, work my way into the field again. And, and you know, I, I, I started training with Lil Cholo and Mariachi Loco, um, they're, you know, two amazing luchadors, and they really helped me get the, the, lucha, the lucha libre style of wrestling down and, you know, being able to use the ropes. And, and really, like, the more athletic stuff that I do came from their minds. And then I started training with John Morrison and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus and, and 
Jake Atlas, another one of my really, really good friends. And, and, and it, man, I'm just blessed. You know, I, I never had a professional, I don't, I don't have a school. I'm one of the guys that wasn't professionally trained, I say, but I, I was able to work with like a lot of people. I went to like Evolve seminars with Adam Cole and Roger Strong and like, all these guys that have done things and are doing things. And I just it was able to pick their brains and, and watch them and study tape on the network and things like that. And wrestling so much. And it's been a huge roller coaster. Um, but I, I love it. And, 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 you know, I love serving in the military. I, I love being a Marine, but I love what I do now. And I don't feel like it's work. You know, it feels like, like pleasure. And, and, and it's just being around everybody, guys, like, you know, Fred and, and in the locker room, it, it, it really like makes me feel like this is what I was always supposed to do. And, and I wake up happy to do it, you know, and it feels great. I think that's how it's supposed to be, man. It's supposed to be fun because you're putting your body on the line all the time. And if it's not fun, what are you doing it for, you know? And yeah. before I continue, I just want to say thank you so much for your service, man. Um, and also, um, you mentioned earlier when you picked up the Rocks DVD that he was your favorite. Uh, growing up in Brooklyn at the time, were you already a wrestling fan? Were you watching wrestling as a kid? Yeah. Um, the first match that I can really remember was... <laughs> 97 Bad Blood. It was Taker and Michaels and Hell in a Cell. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's and I only remember this because I remember Kane coming through and, yep. and I remember like, oh my god, that's got to be Kane. <laughs> the famous like, line. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting so mad that he was causing the take Undertaker the match. Yeah. I turned, I turned the TV off in the middle of the like, wow, the of and my dad popped me in the back of the head and sent me to my room and and. After that, like I just was so invested in wrestling. The Rock, I think it was just his catchphrases sure. that really stood out to me, and the, he always had some cool shit. I felt like um, his energy was always high. Like you know, then he would always flirt with like the girls, and Lillian say, Garcia, cheesy two liners with the girls and stuff. And then you know, I I I just was like automatically it was The Rock, and then my dad was like a huge Kurt Angle fan. Like as soon as Kurt Angle came my dad and it's like he, my dad watched wrestling his whole life so when Kurt Angle came into the thing he's like this guy's gonna be the guy this guy's gonna be the guy and I was like you I'm like dad he looks stupid like, he's not, like, <laughs> he, he, he was like he, he like cut a promo mid-match in the middle of his debut I'm like what is he doing like I right. didn't know anything like, this is dumb but then Kurt Angle ended up being the guy you know and, and I think it, it was uh the rock side is stepping away a little bit and you know the radicals were there at the time and Eddie Guerrero was just the one for me after that, after The Rock, it ended up being Eddie Guerrero and just the way his charisma, him being Latino, you know, and, and I, I remember like seeing him when he first came in all the way up until, you know, The Rock was already kind of a star when I started watching. Right. I remember watching Eddie before he became that big star and sure. watching him go from being, you know, just a guy jumping over the barricade to winning every belt individually, you know, yeah. until he beat Brock Lesnar for the title. And, and it was just, awesome you know and then Rey Mysterio was another one that I was you know loved watching as a kid so I was a fan I stopped watching wrestling right before I went into high school because it wasn't the cool thing to right do. right at that time I was a knucklehead and I wanted to do stupid things to, to fit in at the time sure and when I when people started finding out that I was wrestling a lot of them laughed you know it was like it was like a joke to them and then like a lot of my boys supported me they would come to like all my matches in the beginning and then when they see me losing because like the promoter just I, I just kept losing matches and and uh they were like man what the f like how, how can you train marines how can you do all this stuff and you just, you're getting your ass beat by all these people mm -hmm. who look like they don't even go to the gym you know and, and and it they stopped coming to my to my shows they stopped showing up they stopped buying the shirts they stopped supporting and you know and and i felt like you know fuck maybe i shouldn't be doing this and I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep pushing because I, I feel like this is where I belong, you know. And yeah. now everybody that like laughed at me back then, now all of a sudden like, hey bro, like when's your next show? Or, hey bro, like can I, where's the, what's the, you know, like they want to be fans and stuff like that, and and you know the girls are like, you know everybody, oh don't forget the little people is what they say, and it's like, <laughs> you know you weren't really there though, so, but but it's all love, you know. People have different ways of showing support, you know, and, and I needed people to laugh at me. I needed people to tell me that I couldn't do it because I'm definitely hard headed and I'm definitely, you know, one of those people that need to prove people wrong for me to work harder. And, and now it's at the point now where I just, I'm happy doing it. So it makes it so much easier. 
Arnold, you see what I'm talking about? I, I told you about Limelight earlier, a couple of weeks ago, whatever, that we needed to have him on because very few people can control an interview in a good way. And Limelight is just doing that, man. He is a great storyteller. You know, I always say, don't die with the story and you tell it. And you are just telling a, a beautiful story, bro. Thank you so much. You know, with your friends getting mad at your shows because you were losing, did they not know that it was a work or they just wanted I, you to I, win overall? I, I think, I think I, I didn't, I never, they were always asking me things and I, I tried to like, you know, keep the magic alive. Sure. You know, keep the belief, you know, and because they, they were with me when I was younger, a lot of them, and they see me get into bar fights at the club. Oh, and I see, I see. And they see, and like, up. I'm a first degree black belt martial arts instructor. Like I teach the martial arts program in the military, close quarters combat. Mm. Like, Which martial arts? Uh, it's it's a Marine Corps martial arts program. It's a mix between boxing, judo, jujitsu, oh, wow. and, and karate. It's Jeez. a mix of all of it. It's not like 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 a a ten year, twelve year like thing like a like like a real martial art. This is more of a condensed version just to get you prepared for close quarter combat. Wow. In that situation. So like to them, they just. I don't know what they was expecting, you know, and, and, yeah. and I never, I never wanted to tell them things because, you know, I, I, I want, I wanted to keep the dream alive. You sure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, I think that it, it, it was more like they wanted to show up and see me win. Yeah. Know? I get that. And, and, and I get that, you know, and, and, you know, one of them actually, he's actually, uh, my roommate PJ, he, he was there from the beginning and he, he like, he, he was one of the ones that never stopped supporting me. He will always share a flyer or, or go to a show he could or go buy a shirt. And, and now, like, now he's, he's, he get every Friday for New Japan Strong. He's like, hey, <laughs> New Japan, let's turn it on. He'll watch it. He'll watch the matches from Hollywood. Oh, man. Um, and, and and he's also, he goes to school for music. And, and he does all the music for my, my films that I write and produce. Like, he wow. does the background music and, like, the, the action music for the fights and things like that. He composes it. So it's like one of those things where, you know, you were there for me from the beginning. You, you should be there with me now. You know? Yeah. And, and I've always been a, a real believer of like those that, that held you down, you know, when you when you needed the most should be the ones that are there with you when you're popping champagne, you know? Yeah. The ones you ate burgers with, you eat steaks with. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that should be on a shirt. It should be. Eat, eat, eat steaks with those you ate burgers with. There you go. You got you to gotta copyright, trademark, patent that right now, man. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, Limelight, are you still close with your parents, your mom? And uh, I, I know your mom, you know, she just celebrated her birthday. But are you still close with your dad and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, my dad is my best friend. Um, he, I had a closer relationship with my dad than my mom. Um, my dad was, he would always tell he would always tell me, you never know who's watching. Mm. That was like his thing. And my dad, you know, and I'm not trying to shit on my dad, but he don't have a high school diploma. He, he, he did his thing when he was younger to provide. And, and he was, you know, he was a hustler. Yeah. And, and he, he raised me to be street smart. He, ra he raised me to live life a certain way. And, but he always made sure that when he came home, I had a brand new Spider-Man comic book. Wow. Or I had a brand new, you know, wrestling ring or action figure from, you know, my favorite wrestler or my favorite superhero, you know, and, He's the one that really got me into the comics. He's the one that really got me into wrestling. He would take me to the park so I could practice parkour and jumping and climbing. And all the stuff that he trained me with, we used to have a joke. And I don't believe it's a joke, but, you know, it's just, we used to call it the Rivera skills. He would take me to go practice my Rivera skills to make sure my skills were sharp. sharp. And everything that he taught me is what I use now in the ring, what I, what I use on set. Yeah. Those when I'm, you know, when I'm game testing for Ninja Warrior or Ultimate Tag and things like that. Like, it's those Rivera oh my skills. Goodness. My my. It's funny you say ultimate tag. I, I think I auditioned for them like January 2019. Wait, did like the <laughs> wait, both of you guys. Wait, hold on. So Fred, that's what you were auditioning for? Because I remember you told me like you went, you had an audition for like a reality like like type of show. Um, I just finished watching that show. I didn't know that you. I watched the first yeah. season of that. I had no yeah. idea that yeah. you. That's the one you auditioned for. That's like intense. Yeah, I they, yeah, they um yeah. They had me game testing all the obstacles before. So what they do is, it, um, when you audition, you can audition, and then if you don't get it, they 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 choose like the actual like skilled parkour people to be the chasers. Yes. And, they, and then if you don't make that cut, then they use you to test the obstacles to make yeah. sure the, you know 
difficult, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I tested all those stuff um, using my Rivera skills, you know? It's so, funny because, yeah. like, watching that, um, all, the, all the chasers or whatever, to me, they were yeah. so, like, wrestling gimmicky, right? A little yeah, bit. Like, you have the giants. <laughs> you have the so nerd. One of, friends, one of my good friends, her name is Yesenia. She played Dynamite. So oh, that's yeah, fun, yeah. man. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, it, was, it was a fun show. I really wanted to be a part of it. I just finished auditioning for Ultimate Dodgeball. Oh, so is that coming up? Out. Is it's that already up? up right now. They're okay. filming right now. Oh, I think they might have had to stop actually because of COVID. I'm not sure. sure. But that was the, the, the next thing that they were doing was Ultimate Dodgeball. Um, and then obviously tight, Titan Games. Amazing. Season three, I think, was coming up. Season two was coming up. Fred, uh, did you audition to be a chaser or did you audition to be a contestant? Uh, I think a contestant, but I did the obstacle course. It was hard. Hard. Bro. It is hard. <laughs> again, again, I got to keep it PG, man. But like, I remember doing the, I, I remember being to the audition extra early. I was stretching. I had like uh, my ankle. Um, the only thing I didn't put on were my like ankle braces and I should have put them on because I hopped this one wall, twisted my ankle. I still ah. kept going, still kept going because of adrenaline. After I was done, like my ankles, Swelled up. <laughs> it, it, it swelled up. It hasn't been the same since. This was January 2019. So I have to like actually use this Graston tool to like to like massage, like get all the scar tissue at the bottom of my foot, my wow. knees and ankles, you know. So I'm just I'm just an old man. So just me trying <laughs> that, I'm like, that that is not for me. I, I was just going in there, I thought as a gimmick, but it was the toughest thing I've ever done in my <laughs> yeah, life. It was man. it was it was intense, man. The course was intense. It was fast paced. Um, it was fun. It's funny you said that. I mean it's not funny your ankle thing, but when we were game testing, there was somebody who he he tripped over the obstacle, like one of the walls, and he he broke his ankle and the bone came out. Ooh. And I was just like, it was bad. Like, it was bad. And I was like, man, this is intense. But then they're like, okay, we can't use this wall. They made it shorter. They changed something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was like, you know, it, they were great. They took good care of him. They took, they took good care of us, but the obstacles were intense. And it was an awesome show. If you, if you watch, you said, you know, you saw the season. But yeah. It was a fun show. I can't wait for season two. I always I love to watch. to actually audition for season two. I always love to watch the um, the reaction of the chasers when the contestants like beat them because they try to keep a smile on their face, but you can tell like their ego kind of hurts. Yeah. <laughs> like you got away from me, like in front of everyone. <laughs> but that's a great show. That's cool, man. Yeah, we we it was um we we had did it at the Warner Brothers lot. So that was oh, I see. Being, being over there. Wow. That was fun. Man, you're busy. Like you, you juggle so many things with wrestling, and you're talking about writing and producing movies. What kind of movies are you writing? Are you into more like comedy or drama? So for me, um, I like to 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 do action. Oh, cool. Of um, course, yeah. <laughs> I also, I also write drama. Um, I, I this year alone, in 2020, I I wrote and shot five short films. Um, one of them right now is in post production. Um, it's called Joe Riv. Um, and so, so a lot of people don't know my, my birthday is September 2nd. It's the same birthday as Keanu Reeves. Oh, happy belated, um, man. Thank you. Yeah. Keanu Reeves was like one of my favorite actors growing up. It's like, I love the matrix. I love, you know, speed and, and more, just more recently, you know, the John Wick franchise. It's great so movies. Joe Rib was like, kind of like a nod to John Wick. And, and it's, it's about a, you know, a, a war hero who had to go K, be considered KIA for three, like he was killed in a mission. He, his family, nobody knew that he was still alive. Three years has gone by. You know, the story picks up three years after he was killed. Mm. Um, and his sister's at a club party, and his sister gets killed. Wow. At the club. Wow. And so Joe Riv comes back home from, from the dead, essentially, to, to avenge his sister. Wow. And so it's, it's going to be about 15 minutes or less. It's a short film. Um, we Amazing, amazing, you know, scenes. We, we have club scenes. We have cafe scenes you know oh, that's great uh, uh hallway scenes there's a love my, my now there's a love interest my ex-fiance in the film she's my my ex-fiance um not my real ex-fiance but in the film my fiance oh, okay i thought it was your ex your real ex-fiance no, i was like man you're feeding the family no, 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 no. <laughs> my fiance thought i was dead as well so she ends up coming to the club when i come to the club to look for revenge she sees me it's just so much drama in there as well but the action scenes you know i was fortunate enough to have you know, Nick Herms, who was part of Transformers franchise, part of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, a lot of films like that. He's an action hero. Um, come on set as well to help me stunt coordinate everything. And, you know, I just worked with some talented stunt dudes, and I had a good friend of mine named Miko Sad direct the film. 
So it's just a film about family, um, honor, and it's some, some badass action scenes. I did all my own stunts. I coordinated all my own fights. You wow, know, that's awesome. My peers, and, and I can't wait for everybody to see it when it comes out because it's going to be just submitted to film festivals. Yeah. Um, and, and it's going to be hopefully well-received by everybody because I put a lot of heart into that one and passion and uh, some great actresses and actors involved as well. So it's going to be a good one. And then more recently, uh, I, I did a film with John Morrison called The Speed of Time. I did oh, all the stuff. was that the one that film. just came out? That he yeah, just... it just came out. Um, was Dolph Ziggler in that too? Yeah, with Dolph Ziggler. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I was training with John he, uh, wrestling. He found out I did stunts. He was looking for a guy to help him come up with the, the concept for the fights for the film. Um, I told him I, I didn't have nothing going on, that I'd do it. You know, I just did it as a, you know, as a hookup because he was helping me in the ring and I didn't have any expectations. So I went and I helped him with the fight development, you know, um, and they ended up liking it. And then he ended up saying, hey, I want you to be in the movie. And so I went to Florida with them um, and we stood at the Don Caesar, beautiful hotel in Tampa. And, you know, it was just an awesome time just, you know, doing all the stunts. I got to do some sick stuff and the film was fun, you know, so I had, I had a really, really good time with that. Okay, now, Limelight, um, I always say that anyone that we have on the podcast, for me, it's like sitting under the learning tree to learn about uh, how, how you handle your daughter, how you get into stunt work and stuff like that. In 2009, you joined the, Uni uh, you joined the United States Marine Corps. Uh, what, um, what, what, what made you get involved in the uh, Marines? Marines. Um, so that's a good question. I, actually, nobody never asked me that. In interview. Um, honestly, so I used to want to, you know, be a wrestler and, and an actor, obviously. And when, when, obviously when I was told when that wasn't possible for me, um, my, my dad became my baseball coach. He was my, my youth sports coach. He coached me and all my friends in the neighborhood. Uh, we all went out to try out for baseball, me and my friends. Nobody picked us up because we sucked. My dad paid the fee to become a coach and volunteered his time and started coaching us. So I fell in love with baseball and I wanted to be the next shortstop for the New York Yankees. Um, unfortunately, I used to get into a lot of trouble in school, in high school. I was hanging around with the wrong people and stuff like that. And I ended up getting What would you off. do? What would you do in high school that, like, because you know your personality is out there. You know, me, I'm, I'm in the locker room with you. I'm very, I'm a quiet guy. You see how I operate. I'm, I'm yeah. quiet. But what would you do? Um, I... I would, you know, I was cut classes to hang out with girls. We would shoot dice yeah. in the locker room, um, fighting, a, a lot of things, other things. Um, and so I ended up getting kicked off, kicked out of two schools, uh, two high schools. And I had to finish my senior year in Long Island. And when I drove to Long my family drove me to Long Island to, to, to do my senior year. At this point, I'm a senior and the team, the, the high school already has their varsity team. They've been using the same kids for the last three years. They tell me there's no space for me on the team. I can't play baseball. I'm a senior, which means nobody's going to be looking at me now. So there goes my baseball dreams. Um, I think I was really good at it too, um, but I would never know what happened. And so I had nothing to do, no plans. I, I didn't know what to do with my life. Um, this kid at school who I met at the baseball tryout, he told me that, um, he was joining the military and that he, if, if I went with him to the office, he gets points. And he said, if I went with him, he'll buy me pizza. So I was like, all right, man, like I had nothing to do at the school. I went with him. Um, I walked into the recruiting office and this is recruiter dressed in his dress blue uniform, looking real sharp. His name was Staff Sergeant Rosario. Um, and he starts talking at me and he looks at me and he goes, man, you can't be a Marine. And I looked at him like, who the fuck is this guy telling me that I can't be a Marine? Like, you don't even know me, dude, you know? So I started talking back to him. He's like, that's right there. You see that right there? That's how I know you couldn't be a Marine. You might want to walk across the street to the Army. The Army's hiring me. And so I looked at him, and I said, all right, I'm going to go across the street to the Army then. Mind you, I had no intentions of ever joining the military. So now this guy, somehow, like, his, his words made me go to get the Army. So I started walking across to the, the Army, and this, the soldier comes out. And I'm not taking any shots at any of the military. Um, I think that every branch has their job, but the Marine Corps is just, the standard is just very different. And so this army recruiter comes out, he has his hand in his pocket, he's smoking a cigarette. And I looked at him in his uniform and I looked back and I looked <laughs> about what the Marine looked like in his uniform. And I turned right back around and I walked right back into the Marine office and I said, I don't care what you say, I'm going to be a Marine. 
I had no intentions of ever joining, but the fact that this man told me I couldn't do it and then try to say I look like that, <laughs> to me was a challenge. I, I was 17 years old. I said, I'm joining. He said, okay. I joined. I went home. I, well, I, I said I wasn't going to join. I took my test. I, I passed the, with a 55, <laughs> which was like a decent score. Uh, I went home and I told my mom and my dad that they need to come down to the recruiting station and sign me up to the Marine Corps because I'm leaving to the Marine after high school. And wow. Like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm joining the Marine Corps. And my dad was like, good, good shit. I wish Ooh. I would have did that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because when I was a kid, I was a little shithead. So they were always, you know when Jerry Springer shows? You yes. The, the drill sergeants come. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. Um, he had his own show later on, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they would always threaten me. Like, if you keep acting up in school, I'm going to send you to boot camp. Well, joke's on you, mom and dad. I'm going on my own will. <laughs> so I joined, and then I became one of those guys. You know, wow. I and I remember yeah. when I joined, uh, and I graduated boot camp, and I started getting promoted really fast, my recruiter was like, man, they used to call me Hollywood. Mm. I was a, I, back then, I was very cocky. I wanted to be in the limelight and stuff like that. And so they, the recruiters would call me uh, Pooley Hollywood was my nickname. And so I, they were like, fucking Hollywood. I never knew. I never would have believed you would have gone this far. I, I ended up getting promoted to the rank of staff sergeant faster than he got promoted to the rank of staff sergeant. And I ended up, you know, being the top 10% in the Marine Corps, going to be a drone instructor, making Marines, and then... You know, he. I remember after I graduated, I graduated an undergraduate, the number one graduate out of drone instructor school. And my recruiter called me again. He's like, "You fucking did that, man. I'm proud of you." Yada yada yada. Um, and and yeah, it was just a challenge that ended up being the best thing that I ever did with my life. And you know, I I'm in Hollywood now, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 crazy. But I, it was random. It was never in my plans. But you know, God works differently, and so. It, the Marine Corps set me up for success and it put me right where I needed to be to find my daughter's mom. Wow. You know, it put me right where I needed to be to find my daughter, put me right where I needed to be to find, you know, my best friends, wow. find wrestling, find acting. And I never, I don't know, I try to sit and think like, where would I be yeah. if I didn't join the Marine Corps? And I, I can't picture it. Wow. Because, because I remember what I was like back then. I remember the dumb shit that I was doing. And, and, and this isn't a shot at my family or friends from back in the day, but they're not doing anything with themselves. And so to me, it's like, I would have, you know, you're the average of the people you surround yourself with. Right. And, and the Marine Corps is the top 3% of America. And I feel like it, it, it put me where I needed to be. And, and I'm grateful for the military and I'm grateful for the Marine Corps, what it did for me, what it's done for my daughter and what it's done for my daughter's mom. Cause my daughter's mom, she's now a recruiter. So now she's recruiting wow. people to join the Marine Corps. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, awesome it's 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 part of who i am and it it set me up for success wow good for you man and you you had a lot of success uh in your life so far and more to come um you know earlier you mentioning that you're into like cosplay and all that stuff and you kept on mentioning that uh that spider-man is one of your favorites uh what is it about spider-man that's different from you know the other marvel superheroes and batman what attracted you more to the spider-man character I think it was, you know, the fact that Spider-Man is one of the few characters that 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 lives that split life without anybody knowing who he is. Mm. Um, he's one of the few that separates being Spider-Man from being Peter Parker. You know, it's not like Tony Stark who wants everybody to know he's Iron Man. It's <laughs> yeah. not like Wolverine who doesn't give a crap about anything. He's Wolverine. You know, Spider-Man right. has the morals. He has that ethical code of with great power comes great responsibility, which means that no matter what happens, what the outcome is, how it would affect him personally, as long as it's the right thing to do, he'll do it. I love that about him. Um, I love that he was close to his Aunt May, who, who to me is like a, you know, a grandma figure in my eyes. And I'm very, very, I'm a grandma's boy. I'm very close to my grandma. Um, Spider-Man, Peter Parker's smart. He's, he's very smart. Um, he, he's, he's, he's funny. He's, he's, he has, you know, that sense of humor. He's strong. His powers are dope. His costumes are dope. And yeah. that Spider-Man usually gets, the, gets pretty hot girls, you know, like he's, <laughs> he's had a few relationships in the comic books. Yeah. Um, but he's also a natural leader. Right. And, and I think that he's one of the characters to me that, that he has, he has such a long history of, of worthy, worthy villains, adversaries, long history of, of growth. And, and I, I just, you know, I feel like I relate more to him because I can do the, the, the flippy, the yeah. jumpy, the timey, you know, the, the wits, the smarts, the street smarts. And, and I think that, that Spider-Man is, is, to me, he's my favorite because of all those things. And he was one of the characters that my 
you know, the most comic books that I had, the most that I got to read up was on him. Yeah. Um, I was never really a fan of DC, mm -hmm. like Batman and things like that. I was mm. not really into that. And so it was always Spider-Man for me. And, you know, I, I actually got to meet Stan Lee. Um, wow. Before he, before he, right before he passed away at, at a convention. Wow. And it was one of the best moments. Of, one of the top, honestly, top three moments of my life, you know, was, was that right there. My daughter being born, meeting yeah. Stan Lee and, and, and becoming a Marine. The top three moments of my life right there. And so... It, it was pretty cool to meet meet somebody that, that helped shape my life, really, because his comics just really influenced me and who I am. So Yeah, and I think it was really cool for, for him. He'd always make cameos in Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. And I always, like, whenever I watch it with my wife, like, I, he, she, she doesn't know what he looks like. So every time he makes a cameo, like, oh, that's him. That's him. Yeah, that's yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, I, love, I love how they did that, man. And it's, it's kind of sad to see the movies now without him. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, he, heroes get remembered, legends never die. You Absolutely. Know, that, that, you know, everything that he did is shape, helped shape who I am, for real. Do you ever, would you ever incorporate Spider-Man stuff into your wrestling gear? Or have you ever done that? I did. Yeah? Um, yeah, in 2019, I called it the year of the spider. Oh, you're wearing it right now. <laughs> and, uh, it, 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 you know, because, I mean... All of my gear in that year, I, I changed gear like a lot. Like yeah. I love having brand new gear, and like you know, I, I it's like wearing clothes. I don't like to wear the same outfit two sure. times, and I actually like to wear the gear. You know, um, so that year, all my gear was different Spider-Man suits from comic books. Mm. So, but but I only wore the trunks. So you know, I had the, the red and blue. I had the Iron Spider. I Dope. had you know the Future Foundation. I had Captain Spider. I had you know Endgame. All right, you know, I just. Every all my favorite comics that I remember the, the Cindy with the black suit. I just would hit up my gear lady, who her name is Samantha Packer. She's an amazing, wonderful woman, and I would send her a picture of the comic book cover, and I was like, "That's that suit, same style gear." And she'll write Spidey Limelight on the kickback yeah. covers, and, and then the spider always changed because on every suit his spider is different. So the spider in the front would always change to a different kind of spider, mm. and then my name would be on the back, and it was all tailored to you know different comic books of Spider Man. You must have been so pumped when Rey Mysterio made his debut in WWE because I don't know if you remember his first outfit when he came to SmackDown when he first premiered, it was Spider-Man themed. Was it? Yeah, it was red and blue and he had the spider webs and that's when he made his WWE debut oh, and shit. it was all Spider-Man out. I have, to, I have to go back and look at that. I never noticed that. I do remember when, you know, I always said, man, his name is Rey Mysterio. When is he going to do a Mysterio yeah. gear? And then for WrestleMania... He's superheroes the spider-man we came out he, he did he did the mysterio gear and i was like finally oh uh, yeah <laughs> it was always like what yeah. iron man joker, joker. Uh, what else man like he's other done, stuff yeah so so many he, he's another guy who his gear changes like every time he comes out and i, I love i always loved that it was like him and chris jericho was like two people that i always seen had different style gears yeah and, and i well, i, I, I Limelight, we had a conversation about that backstage. Uh, yeah, I, I had learned from. Yeah, yeah. You I said, you said that he, exactly. the more gear, the more gear you have, the more action figures they make. I, I remember you said that. <laughs> exactly, bro. That's brilliant, really. If you think, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. But, I, but I, I just, I just remember always, you know, wanting to have new gear, and even now I try to. I'm actually having new gear made for this weekend coming, um, and it's just. Every time I try to, every time I try to be somewhere, I try to have new gear because sure. you, know, you got to invest in yourself. You're, you're your own, you know, what people see of you is what you look like. And, and, and I'm not ragging on any of the other wrestlers, but when, when you come out and you look like you, you, you know, you don't take part oh, of wearing to the ring. It does, it does disgust you. It, it definitely, we've had conversations, yeah. we, we de we've definitely had conversations about it just disgusting you <laughs> not having new gear and stuff like that or or another, or, or another thing if, if you're at tapings and you got to do five matches over the weekend and you're wearing the same gear for all five matches like it smells bad it's yeah like unsanitary I'm sure so it's investing yourself if any wrestlers are gonna listen to this like get new gear yeah at least at least have three pairs you know <laughs> Well, like you said uh, before, um, you said 2020 is, has been treating you well. Well, I want to say congratulations for making your debut in New Japan Pro Wrestling. How has your experience been like with the company so far and, uh, you know, having Fred around and everything? How has, how has and, and JPW been treating you? Oh, man. Um, it's, <laughs> I, I never knew what New Japan was or Ring of Honor or, or, or independent wrestling when I was a kid. I only knew WWF and WCW. And when I started wrestling, I started learning about New Japan. And honestly, you know, 
you know, I want to take a second to thank Rocky Romero, you know, the guy that, you know, I met at Championship Wrestling in Hollywood through Dave Marquez. Rocky's an amazing dude, another Puerto Rican cat, you know, that, that kind of took me under his wing, for, you know, for, for lack of a better term, and kept in touch and, and invited me out to the tryout. And, you know, it, it makes me feel like all the weekends that I missed with my daughter, the birthdays that I had to pass, the holidays, things like that, um, it, it was for this moment. Mm. And, and, and I feel like, you know, New Japan is a huge stage. It's yes, it is. The top, you know, and, and, and it, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to have a tryout match. It's another thing to make an appearance, but to be on there every week, damn near, to me, tells me that someone believes in me and, and I, I'm working my ass off and having guys in the back, like you said, like Fred Ross or Juice, you know, Rocky, Jeff Cobb, you know, even even the Bullet Club guys like Jay White, Kenta, all those, everybody's there, you know, and you see them. <laughs> and, and it's just like, you know, I don't want to say I made it because I feel like I still have so much work to do, but it, it makes me feel like, wow, like I'm here. And they believe in me because they, they keeping me here. They, they could have brought me for the first one and, and they never brought me back. But no, my first match, I wrestled TJ Perkins, who's a great friend of mine, you know, mm -hmm. amazing man. In my opinion, one of the best, best technical wrestlers there is. And then I kept coming back, and they kept inviting me back. And, you know, now I have the Lions Break Crown Tournament going on, and it's, it's been a thrill ride alone. And you're competing with guys like guys from the Bullet Club. You're competing with, you know, Fred Ross or PJ Black, you know, Rocky Romero, Jeff Cobb, and then all the young up-and-comers like Alex Zane, Blake Christian, yeah. Adrian Quest, Logan Regal, Barrett Brown, this is, Carl Fredericks, Clark Connors. Like, mm -hmm. I, can, I, mm -hmm. I can keep going. And you can't say that about a lot of rosters. You cannot say that from the newest guy to the most veteran guy, you cannot say that you're going to have a good match almost every time you step out there. You can trust them and know that it's going to be a hard-hitting and steel sharp and steel, and, and that's exactly what the locker room is, and I don't think I can explain it any better than that. I'm like, I've been doing this 18 years. It's still new to me. It's still intimidating because going to my first New Japan show last November, I was there to see if I belong there, if I fit in. And it's like one of the hardest working locker rooms that I'm like, man, I don't wanna, either I'm gonna shift to bed here or I'm gonna have one of the uh, best runs of my career, man. So like- And, you, uh, and you've been uh, killing it. You've been, I, 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 you've been killing it. All the, the online people are talking about it. Like you, you definitely belong. You wouldn't, I don't think you'd be there if you didn't. And, and even like, I'm not trying to put any spoilers, but you and I, <laughs> we've got to, you know, do some things, and and and, and that alone to me is like, it, it's awesome. I, I, it's, it's awesome, man. And seeing you there, seeing that how you didn't give up on yourself after everything that you went through, and just keep pushing. And you're in the best. It looks like you're in the best shape of your life right now, mm -hmm. and it's it's awesome. It's just it's just ah, uh, good things happen to good people, and like pe good people belong in good places. And New Japan is one of the best places to be at, and so. You're there for a reason, and, and I'm happy to be there and just see your career continue and mine start to kick off at the same time. Yes, the limelight, you couldn't have said it any better. Let's get to 21 totally random questions, man. This interview is just flowing too, too good. I don't want to mess up anything. <laughs> so can we roll with it? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite thing in your closet right now? Oh, my. Oh, my favorite thing right now in my closet, I have a pair of Pradas that I just bought. They're all white. <laughs> Clean as a whistle. And I can't wait for the clubs or something like that to open up so I can throw them back on and get out there and, 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 and stunt. Um, so, yeah, right now, those, 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 those Pradas. When things break, do you prefer to fix it or replace it? Replace it. Replace it. <laughs> How would you be absolutely horrible at? A desk job. Uh, what's your favorite movie ever? Training Day. Training Day. Denzel, baby. Yes, yes, yes. What's the most disturbing thing you've ever witnessed? <laughs> the most disturbing <laughs> thing I ever witnessed. Um, I seen a recruit on the quarterback, and he starts puking up all over the place. Disgusting. Right, it was like literally like right in front of me. He's, I'm like, telling him to push, 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 and he just starts throwing up. And I was, mm. I, I wanted to throw up right after. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? I would tell everybody to go look at my daughter. Aww. Check out her Instagram yes. page. Yes. And see all the yes. things she's doing. At Lisi Rivera. Yes, yes. Uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? My biggest, my biggest pet peeve is... Uh, 
My biggest pet peeve is women that don't know how to cook. Oh. <laughs> yeah. and, then, oh and, then, and then they blame it on their mom. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, uh, what makes you anxious? Um, getting ready for a match, like waiting mm. for my music to hit, like those like few minutes leading up to it. Yes, same here. Uh, what's the stupidest thing you've done that someone dared you to? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, I got I am group tattooed on me. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Can you believe I, that's Vin Diesel, man? And all, that's I, his only line? They could have gotten anyone else. They said, we want Vin Diesel's voice. They dared me to do it, and I, I, I'm going to love it now, but I thought it was stupid at the time. <laughs> what's, what's your favorite swear word? Probably fuck. Mm. One food you would never give up. My grandma's arroz con habichuelas, with chuletas, <laughs> tostones, and Puerto Rican food. What you said in the promo, the promo? That I, yeah. <laughs> 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 you gotta go get a plate of grandma's arroz con habichuelas, some chuletas, tostones, oh. aguacate. I love it. Arna, I just love, I love talking crap to Limelight. Uh, it's all good fun. I know he knows that. <laughs> he's always, he's always posting Instagram stories, like the shirts up and I'm always <laughs> like this, you know, just, just, so just, <laughs> just brotherly love. Just yeah, it's brotherly. love. I, I like it. I, love, I, I, I rather that than nothing at all. <laughs> exactly. If you could have three people over dead or alive for dinner, who would they be? Anybody? Yes. The Rock, Eddie Guerrero, <laughs> Stan Lee. Oh, perfect, perfect. What's the worst backhanded compliment you've ever been given? What's that mean? It was uh, like a compliment, but like it insults you at the same time. Like, oh, you're, um, like for me, it would have been like, oh, you're cute for an oh. Asian, like that. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I, I, when, when they used to be like, oh, you're cute, but you're like my little brother. Ouch. Uh, yes, like yes. Worse. yes. Uh, if you could be a member of any TV sitcom, which would it be? Sitcom. Friends. Celebrity crush. Ooh, okay, Kate. so I know everybody in the 90s said Topanga or Kimberly, but for me, it was, it was Kelly from Saved by the Bell. That's top three for everyone, man. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, Kimberly, Topanga, right there, top do you, three. Do you have the Kelly Kapowski shirt from Urban Outfitters? I don't have the Kelly Kapowski shirt. I didn't even know there was one, but I need to get one. Yeah. <laughs> so funny, I used to, uh, uh, we've had a few guests say that, I think Zach Ryder said that, and I would also say that when I was younger because I was closeted, but in all actuality, it was A.C. Slater that I really liked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, he still looks the same. Like, he's, he's a vampire, dude, he doesn't age. He still looks the same, but some of his views, I don't even want to get into, but oh, anyway. Okay. Um, uh, what, what was your first job? The Marine Corps. Uh, What's something you've tried that you'll never try again? Uh, I had alligator in Japan. I never tried it again. Mm. You didn't like it? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Did it taste like mm. fish? Not really. Huh. Okay. If I had to compare it to something, it was like chicken. But the fact that it's an alligator just didn't sit well with it. It messed with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> an app that you hate but you use anyway. Is there an app? Is there an app that I hate that I use anyway? TikTok. Yeah. Wow. TikTok. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm addicted it, to I, that, I, man. I love, I love using it because it's, it's uh, fun. Is there a personality trait you can't stand? Selfish people. Yeah. Best gift ever received. Um. I've, I've haven't really received really good gifts in my life, but my daughter, <laughs> my, my daughter got me, uh, she painted on um, this little wood thing. She painted like colorful stuff. And then she said, it says like, I love you daddy on it. And it's priceless. like by my dresser right there. It's priceless, man. And last but not least, toilet paper over or under? Over, over. <laughs> Oh man, Limelight, uh, we could keep going on and on with this yeah, podcast. We, but, we really uh, could ask another 30 yeah, questions. Yeah, you know, um, you know, time is money, but thank you very much for being on my podcast and sharing your story, man. It, it means a lot to me. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you're somebody I looked up to, and Arnold, you seem like a really awesome dude, man. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. Um, 
I just can't wait to see what happens going forward, guys. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, man, and best of luck to your wrestling career, acting career, and much love to your daughter and her acting career as well. And again, thank you so much for your service, and you're just an overall great dude, and you know, uh, great things are coming your way, and you deserve it, man. Thank you guys so much. Um, if anybody wants to follow me, they can follow me yes. at Danny Limelight on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, check out my Pro Wrestling Tea store. ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight. Arnold, Fred, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Let's do it again soon. Absolutely. Have a great one, bro. Bye, guys. Take care. Another great episode in the books, huh? Man, dynamite, dynamite episode. So informative. Hi, my loves. Um, uh, I'm just... I'm 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 just on cloud nine in a good way because yeah. this, this guest uh, limelight was <laughs> well positive vibes great dude yeah. uh, hardworking just you know he's inspiring as well he's done so much in his life and he's gonna accomplish so much more and he's just a genuine nice guy man and like you said before that interview could have gone forever because. He's he really is in the limelight all the time. His name his name is him. <laughs> Very few people can uh, make me speechless, and he's one of them. A episode sixty two of Pro Bowl Wrestling, uh, one of our first and only guests to just maybe just have me speechless throughout the entire interview, man. Because yeah. I just uh, I just messaged him saying that very few people can control the narrative. Uh, of their interview. Um, a lot of times we have to force things out of people. Um, it's all good, man. It's all good. People have different ways of expressing themselves. And yeah. this is all fun. To, this is all fun to us. But this that's what you talk about controlling an interview in a good way. And Limelight, yes. Limelight did just that, you know, I'm bad with names, you know, so <clears throat> uh, when I first met a lot of the New Japan Pro Wrestling guys, um, uh, this one guy, his name, his nickname was Midas Touch. So I would call him Midas Touch. Limelight, I called Limelight that. Um, and again, just an incredible guest to have on. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm glad we had him on. Um, before we sign off real quick, I just want to talk about what's been going on. Two things, mostly, about what's been going on with wrestling. Because they're the two things that's more that's most fun for me. Um I had to talk about the Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso match. Uh, mm -hmm. I know um, at this point, I don't think you've seen it yet, right? No, I haven't seen it. But it was really beautifully done. Um, Jey Uso came into the ring and he was wearing this, um, like a lei. Uh, and I, I don't know what it means culturally for Samoans. I don't know if that means like you're the chief that, that wears that or whatever. But that's the first time that he wore it and it, it looked really dope. And uh, Roman Reigns came in again, uh, first time debuting the no vest. Like, you know, he looked ripped, he looked jacked, looked in good shape. And I feel like that's how he should be um, looking from this point on. Like, uh, no more vest because he's got the physique for it. And the whole time, the match was like a movie, man. It feels like they turned the microphone in the ring like almost all the way up because you hear every little thing that they say and it's really loud. Even when they were circling each other, you would hear some of the things that Jay Uso says. He said something along the lines of, it didn't have to be this way, man, but you made it like that, so we, let's do this. And, um, you know, Roman throughout the match was just belittling him, um, you know, smacking him in the head. Like, you know, he at one point he actually grabbed Jay's, I'm sure there's a lot of pictures of this. I don't know if you've seen it, that he grabbed Jay's face and pointed to the camera. And he's like, tell the world that I'm the tribal chief. Like, you know, like I'm the tribal chief. And then um, mm -hmm. Jay's like, no, not today, not today. Um, but it was just like a movie, man. It was just a well done match. And I think Paul Heyman, plays a different role when uh, compared to his role with Brock Lesnar. Because with Brock, he's very outspoken. He was the voice of Brock and he was, he was very, um, he had a lot of emotions and expressions. But with Roman, especially the storyline with Jay, he's just kind of like watching in awe. You know, kind of letting Roman just do his thing. He knows it's a family affair. So he's just kind of like sitting back and just letting Roman do, be Roman. And it was little moments that made it super cool because obviously Paul Heyman is his hype man. And there'll be times when Roman would talk to Jay, he's like, call me the tribal chief. And Paul Heyman would be like, you're the tribal chief, you're the tribal chief. And Roman goes, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear it from you. I want to hear it from him. 
So little things like that was just like so cool, man. And um, do you mind if I, sp I know I already said too much info about the match, but do you mind oh, if I no, tell you the no. ending? Oh no, oh no, keep going, tell me. It was almost like a no contest because uh, Jimmy, uh, jo Jonathan came and then he was just, you know, super concerned with Josh. And he's like, come on, man. Like, why did it gotta be like that? And he was like holding on to like um, Josh's hand. And then Roman like dragged him. So it, the hand held, got disconnected. And that was another cool like part of the match. And he was just like hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. And um, Jimmy wanted to throw in the towel. Like he wanted to throw in the towel. Like let's make, he had a white towel. Like and he's about to throw it, right? And he's like, I think Josh was like, hey, don't, no, 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 don't do it. And then, um, but I think the ref like was the one that called the match off because he just kept on like beating him and beating him. <laughs> and then, um, and then John. It's so funny. It's so funny hearing this because I can actually. See it? <laughs> I can actually see it happening in real life, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. But keep, but keep going. So the match is already over and Jimmy Uso was hovering, like protecting his brother. And then like Roman was just like standing, looking at him like, you know, you know, you know, the Roman look. And um, uh, Jimmy was like, damn, man. All right. Like, you're the tribal chief. All right. Is that what you want to hear? You're the tribal chief. Leave him alone, man. Like, leave him alone. And he just kind of looked like disgusted at Roman. Like, dude, come on, man. Like, we're family. And Roman just like, you know, he just kind of stood back and like let it all sink in. And I think that's how the the night ended but like beautifully told i was reading some of the comments on it like everyone applauded roman's heel work it looked it looked like he's really comfortable in that role and it's it works because it's, it's real you know it's like it really helps that they played a lot of old footage of them as kids and all that and just every the build-up was so beautiful man uh again it was just like a movie you know the promo before the match uh romans told jay like listen i'm not saying that you know you haven't contributed. I'm not saying that you're worthless. You are one half of the best tag team in the world and our family appreciates you. Like, I thank you for that. Like, you know, but listen, like in order for this to work, I need to be the, at the head of the table. Like this universal championship, the family needs it to be on me because not only am I feeding my kids with this championship, I'm feeding your kids. You know, this needs to be here for all of us to thrive. And as um, Roman was walking away, Jay's like, well, why can't that be me? Why can't I be the big dog? I can do that too. And, you know, I guess like Roman didn't like that. And that's why at the end of SmackDown, um, Roman threw the surprise Superman punch. And that was the build up to the match. But the whole thing was just packed. The package, everything was so well done. And I think it worked because... All the Samoans are talented, <laughs> you know? You give them something like that and they will roll with it. And if you just let them be themselves, they will kill it. And at the end of the match, uh, The Rock <laughs> uh, commented on Roman Reigns' Instagram saying like, oh, um, I heard that you guys like killed it tonight or something like that. And something about levels, like, oh, like, you know, like we're a whole different level or something like that. I forgot. But, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. But... It was well done, man. It was well done. You should, I know I basically just laid out the whole match for you, but I think you well, would enjoy I mean, it. Like, uh, even not watching it live, you can kind of see the clips and all that stuff that's on social media. But uh, just uh, the stuff leading up, the, the little details like Paul Heyman being by the side of Roman Reigns. And if you watch the detail of Paul Heyman's phone, Paul Heyman's known for having the phone if you look at some of Paul Heyman's old stuff he had like the VCR size type phone yeah. that he would always have come to the ring now uh presently he has the phone but if you look at the case it's like red like what guy has a red case as a phone <laughs> that's like little details like red can red can be in and you know looked at looked at in different ways you know red is like evil you know what i mean a red phone that's like very <clears throat> just j j it's dangerous on paul Heyman. the thing around uh roman Reigns' neck the red is just very dangerous it's like very you know uh a leader you know what i mean like everything just little details that i spot that like a lot of people might not um uh recognize but why 
but why is the phone cover red? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. Who knows? Maybe that could be a little symbolism that we don't know, or it could be an inside type of thing. Who knows? But good L point. Little, yeah, little, little details like that mean mean the most to me. You know what I mean? My social media is an open diary to the world, so just little things. Uh, this tea company uh, I'm working with sent me some tea. Uh, so I made sure that the mug that I was drinking it in, uh, said Japan on it. You know what I mean? Just little details. Like I wanted the mug to actually say Japan because that's a goal of mine to go to Japan. No one else would pick up on that, but I know, I know I would, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, the last thing that I want to touch on is still, uh, the Clash of Champions and it was the match between Drew and Randy Orton. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't really watch this match. I was just seeing clips here and there. But what a lot of people found interesting is, remember when Randy Orton punted Shawn Michaels and a lot of people were pissed that Shawn got up really fast? Well, in this match, uh, you know, during the match, all the legends that Randy hurt kind of came back to help Drew and got their payback. And one of Shawn's spot was... Uh, on top of the ambulance. Uh, Randy Orton was on top of the ambulance. He turned around and he got super kicked by Sean, but he didn't fall. He got super kicked and he just stood there for a few seconds and Sean had to push them off and that's when he fell. And I don't know if that was a thing that was planned because they wanted Sean to have that spot where he just tips him like, you know, and then he falls down or people are just saying that's Randy's way of coming back at Sean for not selling the punt. Because when he got kicked in the face, like, he didn't sell it at all. He was just kind of, like, making sure he didn't fall off the ambulance and Sean pushed him off. So, who knows with that, man? That's interesting. Did anyone say that? Yes. The, the whole, mm. everyone is saying that. Like, it's Randy's little way of getting back at Sean for not staying down for a long time. Like I said, when, when Randy punted Sean, I love the way Sean sold it. Same. From seeing the clip. Uh, of uh, Sean kicking, kicking Randy and him selling it the way he sold it. I mean, not every kick is gonna, you know, uh, make you flat, flat, flat back bump. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A kick might just stun you, you know, and yeah. your legs are wobbly. I love it, man. I can't, I can't disagree with any type of sell. Yeah. It's all ice cream, just different flavors. You might like Rocky Road. I might like cookies and cream. It's all ice cream. And knowing Randy, well, I don't know Randy, but, uh, you know, like, it might be... You know, we do know Randy because, you know, backstage, he's a wonderful guy and a huge yeah. supporter of the Block Dave movement. Yeah, and he could be just doing that just for fun, just for us to have this conversation right here. He might not be, you know, he, he might have not taken it personal, but he knows the internet's going to gobble it up. So he just did that so people can talk about it. This episode with Limelight has been very cool. Um, who's next on Pro and Bro Wrestling? Yeah, we'll never know, man. You'll never know. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you guys are listening to us on iTunes, make sure you guys give us a five-star review if you like what you hear and let us know what we can do better and write a review. And if you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down in the comment section below. And until then, sign and block the hate, baby.